Not only is Halifax the capital city of Nova Scotia, but it's also the biggest city in all of Atlantic Canada. Unfortunately, we only have one day this time, but we've been here a few times before. So as we walk around the city, we're gonna show you all the top things to do. Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. After almost a decade of world travel, we decided to focus on our home country of Canada and see how deep we could go. This started with a 150 day road trip from coast to coast to coast, showcasing some of the best things to do in each province and territory. We thought we'd see it all on that road trip, but we barely scratched the surface. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on Earth. This time we're staying at the West End Nova Scotian, a historic railway hotel that's right down on the waterfront. The waterfront is actually pretty much the best place to stay because it's where you'll find most of the top attractions. Another cool thing about Halifax is that it served as a port of entry for over 1 million immigrants between 1928 and 1971. So to start things off, we're at the Canadian Museum of Immigration at Pier 21, which is literally right behind our hotel. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I really like this museum. Um, as an immigrant, I find it super interesting to learn about the different paths that thousands and millions of immigrants have taken in order to come to Canada. But also it's very moving to learn about the different feelings of fear, hope, uncertainty, and opportunity that represents coming to a new country and Canada in specific. So whether you're a first generation immigrant or not, I find that this is a great place to learn about the history of immigration, which is a big part of what Canada is today. Even though I'm not an immigrant to Canada, my grandmother actually was. She came over here from Ireland, I believe in the 1930s. But we also read here that more than half a million Irish immigrants came here in the 19th century because of the, the famine over there. So it's easy to see why there's so many Irish people in Canada. If you have followed along our journeys, you may know or not know that I'm originally from Mexico and since I immigrated to Canada, I arrived in Calgary, which is more or less around here. Another cool thing here is you might be able to trace your family roots through the museum's collection of immigration records. They say that about one in every five Canadians is related to someone who passed through Pier 21. My grandmother, she didn't actually pass through Pier 21. She went, I think, to Quebec City, but they still had records on file and they were able to help me uh, trace some of the roots right back to Ireland. Right now we're on the boardwalk basically at the start of the waterfront near the hotel. This is a great place to start for a number of reasons, but one of which is basically why the city of Halifax exists today. The Halifax Harbor is one of the deepest and largest natural harbors in the world, but it was also a strategic point for the British military. Now, of course, you'll find a lot of restaurants, bars and shops, as well as a lot of really cool artwork along the way. I remember last time when we were here, we rented bikes, so we were biking along the waterfront instead of walking. Right across from the I Love Bikes, you can, you'll actually find Alexander Keys. So this is a really cool brewery tour that we did the last time we were here. It's actually from 1820. It's one of the oldest breweries in North America, and it was founded by the then mayor of Halifax, Alexander Keith. But what's really cool about this brewery tour, even though the production no longer happens there, is they take you through a tour with people dressed in period costumes from that time. And they really give you a good explanation of how it was brewed, the history of the place, that you get to try some of the beer, and you even get to listen to live music.
This is our first time in Georgia's sign land, which is only a five to 10 minute boat ride from the Cable Wharf at the waterfront. And this is one of the five national historic sites that are known collectively as the Halifax Defense Complex, as they are the best examples of fortifications built by the British and Canadian military over a 200 year period. Not only is this place popular for historical reasons, but you also get amazing views of the harbor and of actually the whole city of Halifax and Dartmouth. And we've noticed a lot of people come over here for picnics. I wish we had some food, but uh, right behind us is even a big birthday party. Another cool museum you should see while you're walking along the boardwalk is the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic, which is the oldest and largest maritime museum in Canada. It's a really cool place. We were in there the last time we were here, and it's a great way to learn about boat building, about the World War convoys, the Halifax explosion. There's even a cool exhibit on the Titanic, and basically just a really good way to learn about the people of Nova Scotia and their relationship with the sea. But another thing we really loved when we were there is we actually got to learn how to send our name in Morse code. Perfect. Ah, there you yep. go. <laughs> Perfect, SOS. <laughs> Last but not least, you should definitely walk into downtown Halifax and check out the Halifax Citadel and the Halifax Public Gardens, both of which are pretty much right beside each other. The Halifax Citadel is also a National Historic Site and it's pretty much the star attraction here in the city. It's equally as important as the harbour for the reason why Halifax is what it is today. With cannons facing out towards the harbour, the Halifax Citadel star-shaped architecture is very impressive from the inside and out. Not only do you get some good views, but it's a great place to learn about some Canadian history, and thanks to its costume interpreters, it makes learning about history fun. There's even some activities you can watch or take part in, such as watching them fire the cannon, or taking part in one of the many different activities, one of which is called Ready, Aim, Fire, where you can actually shoot a gun from way back in the day. Right now we're actually in the Halifax Public Gardens, which were created in 1867 in celebration of Canada's Confederation and are often considered one of the finest Victorian gardens in all of North America. You'll find many pathways to explore as well as water fountains, 14 different species of trees, vibrant flowers, and a variety of statues. But it's just a great place to where, where locals like to explore and just a really peaceful way to end your visit here in Halifax. Well, it's really too bad that our day was so rushed. It's really definitely too short of a visit to come here for one day, but we hope either way that we gave you some ideas for your next trip to Halifax and to learn more and about other things to do here as well as get some tips for visiting. Just visit our article about things to do in Halifax on mustdocanada.com. And of course, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you miss him? Yeah. Where is he? Hello? Where are you? I guess he... Ah, there it is. Excuse me. Huh? We had to go with a specific tour. It was so funny how we lost him. <laughs> we I thought you were like right behind me. <laughs> <laughs>